Let's set her up. There we go. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to have you all on today. And for those that can't join us today and will listen to us later, it's good to have you too. Um, we have had uh, some interesting discussion before we recorded, but hey, we're good. We're good to go. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about. <clears throat> uh, we'll talk a little bit about imagination this morning. God has been really speaking to me about our imagination. One of the things that He told me. I might have even brought this up last week or the week before, I can't remember. But in in the creation process, I got I, I think that God has told me that God the Father was the imagination. He's the one that imagined everything and you know, pictured everything. And then Jesus, who is the word, spoke those that imagination into existence. And then the Holy Spirit uh, brooded over that to bring everything into fruition, you know, to make everything the way the way God had pictured it. And so we have the threefold um, threefold ministry of the of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There, I and I think that we are. I mean, I know that we are created in God's image, and He's given us. The imagination of the father and jesus even said when he was on earth he only does what the father says for him to do what the father tells him to do so the father was still imagining things and jesus was speaking them out while he was on earth uh, i'm sure jesus imagined things too but regardless but the father gives us the father gives us imagination a lot of that is from him <clears throat> he gives us that imagination from him and uh Imagination is the the dynamite that makes our, our world go, or a dynamo is, is the word that the Greek word house pronounced. And so, uh, you know, mo most people most people don't really understand the importance of the, of imagination. But uh, in Psalm chapter one hundred three and verse fourteen, he says. It says, for he knows our frame, and he knows that we are dust. Now, the word that is translated into frame in this, ver in this verse is the word yeshter in Hebrew. And in, in Genesis 6, 5, 8, 21, and Deuteronomy 31, 21, 1 Chronicles 28, 9, and 29, 18, that same word was literally translated imagination. So basically, we could go back and read Psalm 103 and say this. We say, for he knows our imagination and our thought. And he remembers that we are dust, but we are dust that he's made into his perfection. So so there's five times in the Old Testament that that, you know, just that we can, that right away, I, I found that imagination was their frame the word translated frame was translated into imagination and our, our imagination is <clears throat> our imagination is the frame or spine of our existence it's the doorway our potential and effects and it affects the way we view our life proverbs 23 7 says for as a man thinks in his heart so is he. and that's imagination Whatever we imagine ourselves to be, that's who we become. You know, people relegate imagination to the realm of childhood fantasy a lot of times. They underestimate the influence that we receive from God by first activating our imaginations, without first activating our imaginations. I know a lot of people that uh, wouldn't be in ministry today or in or in the job they're in today or doing whatever they were if they hadn't imagined themselves in that first our imagination is like a spiritual womb it's a creative center genesis 11 records the account of the tower of babel and as the ancient population grew and began to spread out on the earth the people gathered on the plains of babylon and they were they devised a plan to make a name for themselves according to genesis 11 4 
and to reach heaven. I'm sure we all are familiar with that. And uh, and in Genesis 11, 5 and 6, it says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. So basically, the Lord's, in this instance, the Lord's saying that there's really no limitation to our imagination. And so, and basically, so it's amazing that the imagination of these unregenerated people so threatened God's plan for mankind that he had to put a stumbling block in their way by confusing their language. And that just, that slowed them down. That, that actually helped grow the earth in, in volume. I mean, it, it spread people out because they couldn't understand each other. So instead of all being together, it made the world, it made the world bigger by him doing that also. And I think that might've been part of his uh, purpose in that too. Imagination is powerful. It's the first step in doing. If you can imagine something, you can do it. Yet there's a lot of people out there that don't understand this. Um, I guess because they don't understand how to use a godly perspective to a positive imagination, maybe. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just throwing this stuff out. I'm learning this and I'm open where we can uh, discuss this and make more sense to some of us, me, me especially. And uh, if, if we want to see God's will for our life come to pass and we want to reach our full potential, we kind of need to understand that our imagination and how to use it is, is a, and the correct way to use it is instrumental in that. And according to the Hewton Mifflin American Heritage Electronic Dictionary, the word imagination means the process or power of forming a mental image of something not real or present. A lot of people confuse imagination with vision, but vision, the, the uh, definition of vision is a mental image produced by the imagination. You can't have a vision without an imagination. And while these words might be used interchangeably sometimes, I'm going to stick with imagination and the ability to see what isn't present. A, a lot of adults, especially, um, associate imagination with childish fantasy, you know, with childishness. They've been taught that using their imaginations or believing in something they can't see is fantasy. Um, the same dictionary calls fantasy an illusion or a delusion or a whimsical notion or a daydream. I mean, if you look at the definition of the word delusion, it's a false belief held in spite of invalidating evidence. Fantasy isn't real. It isn't based on validating evidence, but imagination is real. Imagination is the ability to see with the mind what we can't see with our eyes. I mean, he, there's scripture that talks about that, you know, to, to, to see things and speak into the existence of things that aren't which are, or are which aren't, I guess it is. If, you know, if I were to ask each and every one of you, which, how many windows were in your childhood home? Even though you haven't really even thought about it in years, I bet you ought to tell me. And the reason, because you can imagine that room and imagine being in there and counting those windows in your mind. And that's, you know, that's... Uh, I mean, that's how it works. You know, our, our mind's eye can recreate our childhood home and we'll walk through it room by room. And whether we realize it or not, we use our imagination every day. We use it to remember where we parked the car. Sometimes, most of the time, maybe. <laughs> no, where we parked the car or to give someone directions. We can't live without imagination. 
If I were to say the word dog to you, you wouldn't picture the letters D-O-G in your mind. Instead, your mind would bring up a picture of a dog. If you owned a little white dog, that's probably the picture you would see. But if I change your picture with my words, but I could change your picture with my words, if I said, it's a big black dog, like Emery's dog. <laughs> it's not so big, is it? <laughs> Imagination helps us see what can't be seen. It creates the pictures in our mind that help us remember, read, and plan. But imagination can only work with the information we give it. It can only work with the information we give it, good or bad, right or wrong. Luke, Luke chapter 6, verse 45 says, uh, People are known in the same way. Out of the virtue stored in their hearts, good and upright people will produce good fruit. Likewise, out of the evil hidden in their hearts, evil ones will produce what is evil. For the overflow of what has been stored in your heart will be seen in, by your fruit and will be heard in your words. So, so if we fill if we fill our imagination with the garbage of the world, that's that's what we're that's what's going to produce. That's what our imagination is going to produce. But if we renew our mind to the truth of the Word of God and God's and God's how selected speech to us through His Scripture and through His revelations to us and everything, then our imagination will be what we receive from God. And it will be uh, positive, and it will be encouraging, and it will be uh, a force to be reckoned with, really. And, you know, we, we could go through almost every Bible character there is and have, there'll be something about imagination in, in each, of their, each of their lives. Uh, Melissa, go ahead. I'll go on after you die. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I have a question and you kind of um, kind of answered it maybe in what you just said a moment ago, but how do you do you have any suggestions or how you get into that state of imagination when current reality is just in your face? You know, when, you, when you're going through some extreme stuff and it's just there, how do you get past that and, and get into that state of imagining better? Mm -hmm. Well, um, my my input, input on that would be, I, uh, I don't necessarily say that the, the negative point of things in the world don't exist. I just refuse to allow them to exist in my mind, you know, so I'm, it's not like I'm ignoring those things. I just really, um, I try to go to, um, well, I try to read positive scriptures. I try to go back to, to some of the things that, um, the revelations that God has given me about who, who I am and, you know, if we if we can center on uh, as much as possible on and imagine as much as possible on who we who Christ says who Jesus says we are and who God says we are rather than what the world says we are and the world's going to bombard us all the time you know that's just that's just the way it is and if we can work not work I don't like that word but if we can can center ourselves on who who God says we are and and meditate on that more then i think it i think it's, it would it would help i mean i, mean, I know that, that it helps me and i'm not saying i can do that all the time i just uh, i'm just saying that that's what god's telling me to tell you right now uh but we have some other guys that have some things too jeff go ahead i'll just you pretty much said it all jl i i'll i will be amening what you just said i want you to know that um uh, i heard uh I think it's a Christian song. Some of you might know it, uh, but the lyric is, tell me once again who I am to you. Amen. And 
you know, you said it in meditation, you know, we, 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 we begin everything that comes into our, <laughs> comes to our attention from somewhere. We have a beginning from somewhere and we, we, we know somewhere in us that that beginning is Christ. It's, it's the anchor of our soul. And I also, uh, I heard that, uh, that, that, you know, whatever it is that is a say that assails you in the moment, and I'll keep this general rather than taking it specific to any one person. Whatever assails us, it has an energy of some kind, and and if it's a negative energy, we have a choice. We can either act like a pole of a magnet and be repelled by it. In other words, use that energy to push ourselves away, mm. or we can we can surround it we can we can accept that we be we in our identity can embrace anything and overcome and when i say we i certainly mean jesus and us jesus Amen. and and if we choose the latter if we choose to embrace whatever comes mm -hmm. kind of a mother teresa attitude if you will if you use that for your imagination you just know that that God in you is greater than anything that's in the world and embrace that and then and draw off that energy to to the to the throne, if you will, to the center of Christ in you. I mean, it, it, this is, again, a, a work of the imagination. Let that let that embrace be the thing that powers the response. I, that's all I'll say about it. Mm -hmm. Another thing, I, I kind of, I said something about meditation. I used to really balk at using that word, but I don't anymore because um, I've come to realize that meditation means um, focusing our mind on on something. It doesn't mean uh, whatever the Dalai Lama thing. <laughs> I'm, I shouldn't even go there, but, well, you know, it doesn't mean something East, Eastern religion or anything like that. It's talking about... Uh, I mean, God, God talks about meditating on his word. You know, there's a scripture talks about meditating on his word, meditating on his thoughts. And, and that goes, I'm going back to what, uh, what I said earlier about meditating on who you are, you know, cause that's what he, that's what he wants you to do. And that's who he wants you to be. Another thing that popped up while Jeff was talking to in my mind too, is that, um, you, uh, one of the good ways to, Keep to get, get out of a, a slump, I guess, is the best way for me to put it, is to try and surround yourself with as many positive influence, influential people as you can. And and that's part of why we do the our Sunday night thing at at, uh, um, at Six Mile Chop House. And, you know, I like the more the more people we can get there, the better, the better I like it because it gives us all opportunity to love on each other. And so, and that's, that's what we do. So Bob, what do you got brother? Well, just for the record, by the way, both, uh, both the, uh, uh, the Jewish religion and the early Christian religion were Eastern religions. Just, just for the yes. record, Jesus was the Eastern mystic. I, yes. I, I, I had a lot, I've had a lot of success in my life consulting and, and my mother used to always tell me I had a vivid imagination and I do, I, 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 I by the way, the word there is image in really. You're seeing something, right? Yep. But a, a couple of decades ago, a, a, a consulting uh, philosophy or a, a concept came to me in the middle of the night. It was PACE. Uh, PACE is an acronym for purpose. When, when you start a consulting project, and, and, and can I for a moment, Melissa, consider you a consulting project? Uh, when, when you start a consulting project, the first thing you do is, is, is you, you look at purpose. What, what is it that you want to accomplish? Nobody ever hires a consultant for $1,000, $1,500 a day unless they want to they accomplish something. So what is it you want to do? What's your purpose? Secondly is analysis. Where are you now? And, 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 and they always paid me to be there because there was a difference between where they wanted to be and where they were. There's a delta there. 
So now, now we know where we want to be. That's, that's imagination, by the way. We know where we are now. That's reality. We can platitude this stuff to death, but there's reality here. There's a reality in the question, right? So, so, we, so our imagination, where do we want to be? And analysis, where are we now, creates a delta. And, and the C in PACE then stands for concept. How do we get from where we are to where we want to be? We sit down and objectively think about that. We, we, we draw a map. We look at what it takes to get us what resources, what energy, what different ways of thinking, all these different things it takes to get us from where we are to where we want to be. That's concepts. E stands for execution. And the first three are just academic if the, if the, if the, if the E doesn't happen. There, there was a great ad that inspired this couple of consultants walking into some guy's office and laying this big reams of documentation on his desk he looked at it and he said wow this is great guys what a great consulting project now let's let's do it and the two consultants looking at each other and saying, well we don't do it well then what's the point so whatever you're facing in your life look at the reality look look at where you want to be imagine where you want to be then look at the reality of where you are and focus your energy on what's it going to take what what can what can i imagine what what can i visualize what that will take me from where i am to where i want to be that's concept and then do those things do whatever it takes and i've literally revolutionized multi-billion dollar companies with that concept I also apply it to my own life. I've, I've built a couple of companies based on that. I'm profitably involved in one of them right now. That that was a good idea, but it wasn't where the ownership wanted it to be. And we analyzed where he wanted it to be, came up with concept, and then we did it. And we're still doing it, by the way. Um, the very practical question, Melissa, it, it it's a real world question and and the answer is what do you want to do and whatever it is you want to do let's see where we are relative to where you want to be let's decide on what it takes to get there and up till now it's all academic then let's do it and that that's what makes it real okay that's what makes it real is doing it god Focus god being jesus and us yep god 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 saw it jesus spoke it holy spirit executed it by the way the word brood you used there man the holy spirit broods that's like a chicken that's like a hen a mother hen brood raising her chickens protecting her her, her chicklets and jesus yep. literally said that about jerusalem 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 yeah how often I brooded over you. I, I would have brooded over you. I would have taken you under my wings. Amen. Cool. Stacy, what do you got, brother? Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, Melissa, I may have misunderstood your question. I don't know, but um, I'll hit this one anyway. Sometimes our imagination is not exactly <laughs> where we think it should be with the right you know, you ask about how to get the right imagination. It's got to be pretty simple for me. Uh, sometimes if that happens, I've just got to pause and I go back and ask God to be his presence in me to be the predominant factor of my existence, right? So when, when he's the predominant factor of me being here, then my mind can be more aligned with the divine mind and when that happens, the imagination part of my mind will be more aligned with uh, his imagination for me. And uh, his imagination for me is always better than anything I can muster up on my own. Amen. That's, that's just a quick, simple little thing that, that helps sometimes. For awesome. Me, anyway. awesome. Thank you. Kitsy. Dude, but you're muted. <laughs> What Stacy said. 
Yeah. But in addition to that, I totally agree with what everybody has been saying. And um, I was going to say, just be sure to keep God in the equation. And, and Stacy yeah. said that so well, and uh, doing all the, the other things that everybody's saying. And um, stay connected with, uh, well, in our, in our group, stay connected with our group here, stay connected with our, um, uh, we're in the WhatsApp, in our WhatsApp group, Bob, you're doing your Tuesday group, you know, whatever groups you can that encourage you, or encourage us to um, remember God's love for us and who we are in Christ. It, it's so, so important. Amen. Amen. Stan. Yeah, um, I have a question, and I, you know, I tie it in with what Melissa asked. <clears throat> in this scenario, let's say that you have a family member, either a sibling or an adult child, and their engagement with you is aggressive or hostile, and obviously it's not something that you desire, but how does this apply when you're dealing in situations with it like that? I mean, it's not someone you can avoid, um how does it how do you address that well i uh, i think that about the only thing you can do in that kind of situation is just show grace and love you and then i mean you want to see i think you want to imagine what relation what you want the relationship to be you know, if you want it to be more than what it is now, then you want to, I think you want to try and imagine that, but you also want to just show them, uh, very totally show them grace and love and acceptance, regardless of how, how they, they treat you or how they are around you, or whatever. I, uh, I'm, I'm saying this kind of from experience. So I think it's, uh, I think it's probably a good, a good avenue to go down. I mean, others others may have some other ideas too, but uh, that would be my take, Stanley. Dana, what do you got? Okay, am I? Oh, okay. I I'm not on mute. No. Um, well, since we've been reading the book Secret, the ladies group, um, I realized that I did. I've never. I've gone through my whole life really not knowing what I want. And thinking that what I want would be selfish and, you know, it would be something I shouldn't even think about. And so, therefore, it's always, what do I do to please others? How do I take care of everybody and stuff like that? And um, it's just so freeing and exciting to think uh, that I can legitimately want and and God wants for me and um, those wants are imagining things yep. that I did never feel free to to do and um, then in the book that we're reading of course we're learning how it's the law of attraction like Jeff said with a magnet um, we whether we realize it or not we go through our day let's say we wake up and uh, oh, woe is me, uh, you know, I'm so angry, I'm still thinking about such and such that happened, and well, then that's the negative day, we're drawing that to us that day, so what's emphasized in the book is to, first of all, the gratefulness thing, even for the negative things, we can give thanks, <laughs> all things, we can give thanks, and find the positive and then start our day by giving thanks and by wanting things that are good for us, like wanting blessings that day and and then saying um the universe is a friendly place and of course god is to me the universe and so basically he wants to bless me and this is a beautiful day, regardless of the weather or anything. It's the day the Lord has made. He's working in my life. All is going well and all will be well. Just those positive things will all of a sudden draw the positive to you. And uh, 
it's just so exciting. And then <laughs> I can ask what I want. And the way uh, to ask, according to this, which is really helpful, is kind of to what Bob was saying. You're, you got to clarify what you want. And that's your asking. And then you, you receive, you believe it, which is part of what uh, Bob's thing. You're, you're analyzing it as well because you're dealing with the now. And I think that book that we read, read called The Now by uh, Eckhart Tolle was very helpful because you're not, when you're meditating, you're in the now and you're not in the past, you're not in the future, you're now. And we're observing ourselves. We're observing our thoughts. And so it's a big responsibility to me to be in charge of my thoughts and to take them captive and not allow my thoughts to go down that uh, magnetism way that's going to attract mm -hmm. the bad things. And uh, gratefulness, of course, is the main thing in life to just be thankful and grateful for everything. And uh, then, like Bob said, what we do is we act, you know, we act on in faith. Uh, which is the, what they say in the book too, but it's also exciting just to be able to want things <laughs> and then to clarify what do I want? And it's all good, you know? That's what's so exciting. There's no selfishness, you know, in just wanting. So anyway, that's my two cents. <laughs> amen, amen. Stacy. But again, for me, I, I have to keep it simple. But you know, uh, when I'm rubbing up against somebody like that, the thing I've found that's, that works incredibly well is to pray for that person, but not to pray for them to become more tolerable for me, right? But rather to pray that uh, they will be more receptive and, and recognize and reactive to the God in them, right? And uh, yeah. So you talk about the gratitude. I always say thank you for having this person in my life. You know, I pray that uh, they will be open and reactive and receptive to the God in you. Because when that happens, the indwelling God in them will resonate with the indwelling God in me. And then, man, problems are gone when you get to that point. But uh, praying for the same thing for them that I want really makes a huge difference for me. Yeah, you know, um, I I guess I may I may have a little bit of a odd look on prayer because I I feel like when we imagine things in our mind, God sees that as a prayer. Amen. You know, and so so I I, I would I think Stacy, you and I were saying the same thing, just with different words. <laughs> so Jeff, what do you got? <clears throat> Well, to Stanley specifically, and off of what Dana shared about the universe, it, it is a benevolent universe. And, mm -hmm. and uh, today's meditation of a Richard Rohr letter is uh, just the first paragraph says, it says, if God is Trinity and Jesus is the face of God, then it is a benevolent universe. God is not someone to be afraid of, but is the ground of being and is on our side. And I, uh, you know, I'm Stanley, you're not alone with difficult people or people that treat don't treat us as we want to be treated. But I, I, I can tell you that with, with the grace that JL spoke of, upon our lives it it will have an impact and an influence beyond our lives and it takes longer in some instances than others and oftentimes when i have people in my life that bring an agenda and an issue that they want to confront me with uh it 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 won't be long if i if i stand in the grace and don't get outside of it and try my own tools to fix something or fix you know fix the issue but rather depend upon the grace the, of the benevolent universe i will see it will ultimately i'll see uh little changes and ultimately 
like water coming over a dam, the dam will burst and it, and it won't, it won't burst over us. It will, it will burst out of the, the person that has the issue. And it's, it's a wonderful, it's wonderful to see that when it happens and believe for it until it does. So. Amen. Good stuff. Bob. Uh, Brother Stan, the most powerful testimony you have is not what you say, but how you respond uh when somebody's being abusive to you uh i mean a soft answer really does turn away wrath and 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 when you love them when they know they aren't being lovable that's pretty powerful stuff uh, by the way people god doesn't have a plan for your life you are god's plan and when you get up in the morning knowing that when you get up in the morning not looking for oh my gosh what do, I, what do I have to do? But get up in the morning knowing that you are a, a critical component in creation made just for this time, just the way you are, who you are in your current circumstance. You're, you, are, you are God's plan. Changes your perspective and your purpose on a lot of stuff. Amen. Amen. Well, in, uh, I'm going to see if I can get back into this maybe a little bit. I think Philip has something first. Oh, there's Philip. Yeah, go ahead, Philip. Right. Um, I was just uh, for, for a while, I've been thinking about um, uh, what Melissa said quite a while ago, uh, saying that it's, if you can correct me, I, I got the idea that there is something present in in your life at the moment, and how to um, deal with it. Is that correct, uh, Melissa? And how to deal with it um, in 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 a Christ Christ centered way? Is that right? Yes. All right. Um, what what came to mind at the time, and I've been trying to keep on in in my memory is. Um, I, I went through something in my life uh, quite a few years ago, and um, I had to, um, what, what really helped me to overcome pain and, and, and misery and, and, and just um, uh, disappointment and, and frustration and all the extra um, things that add on to that is when I came to learn that um, to know, uh, to, to, to to, to really be able to know the, the Father through communicating with Him, through um, not only speaking in prayer, but actually listening and, and listening with, with my spirit, you know, where, where your spirit is, um, is, is one, one with the Lord. It, it's, um, you know, we are, um, we, we have our, we, we have a kind of blended spirit with, 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 with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he's always with us. And, and I think that when you experience pain, what I learned is I asked the father to, to comfort me and help me to experience that comfort by just listening to him. And I don't know if you've ever um, tried that, but, you know, for me, it helped me to understand that I was deeply loved in spite of actually everything crumbling around me. And... Um, I found out over time that I actually, it didn't bother me anymore because I, I kind of like felt so deeply loved within that it didn't make any difference. So uh, I think, you know, if you spend some time just listening to what the father has and ask him to console you, uh, ask him what, what do you want to tell me to, to make my joy complete or to, to help me to uh, just accept the love and let him love you from within. Is a, a word, a passage, or not a passage, but a a phrase I heard from someone. He says, "You know, listen to him because he's with his everlasting arms at the bottom of who you are, and upholding you, and um, and let him love you." And I think that maybe tr that's something you've pro maybe have tried it before, but uh, I just thought to encourage you with that. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Well, you know, 
all the there's every character in the Bible is I'm kind of trying to jump back into where it was. Uh, we can go through every character character of the Bible, and and somewhere along the way, we're going to notice that, that their imagination had something to do with what happened. And for instance, Abram, which was before his name was changed to Abraham, uh, God told him to leave his father's house and go to a land he would later inherit. Now, would I don't know about you, but that would take some imagination on my part, for sure. Uh, you know, Abraham, he couldn't see the land. He didn't know from experience that it would be a good land. And as far as we know, he never traveled any farther than Haran. And so why did Abraham leave everything he knew? Well, I believe it was because God's word engaged his imagination. Abraham's, Abraham's imagination was potential and the ability to receive from God and thus become Abraham. And so is, so is ours. We can't accidentally accomplish God's will for our life. It's not an accident. So when the Lord spoke to Abraham and told him to go, Abraham didn't know where he was going. He didn't know what the life would look like. But he started off anyway. He had a vision of a better inheritance than what Ur or Haran could provide. And as he sought the Lord, Abraham's imagination began working. As he traveled the land, he saw himself owning it. He saw his descendants living there. His imagination produced a vision that became clearer and clearer the thought that he got from Ur. I believe this is why God why the Lord gave Abraham the promise that his seed would be as numerous as the dust of the earth. That comes from Genesis 13, 16. And the stars of the sky, and the stars of the sky is from Genesis 15, 5. Every day Abraham had dust on his feet, and every night he looked at the stars. These things kept God's promise constantly in front of him and helped quicken his imagination. Abraham's vision was like a road map in his life. Just think of it. If you're traveling from North Carolina to California, you'd probably want a map, something, an idea or a picture of where you're going. Without one, any old road will do, but not any old road will get you there. And so, so our imagination becomes a roadmap in life. And so as we imagine what God's will is for us and what, what God wants for us, then we uh, solidify where God wants us to go. Most people don't have a clear vision for their life. They don't know what God's will is. They just can't, they don't, they haven't found that. Instead of seeking God and engaging their imaginations like Abraham did, they let the circumstances around circumstance of life push them around they leave a good support system friends and family and move across country for a hundred dollar raise they spend thousands on medicines that help them cope with sickness and disease uh, they mortgage their future to buy boats that they'll never use or extra televisions they don't need they settle for less than god's best proverbs 29 18 says where the where there is no vision the people perish. Vision, or the Im image produced in your imagination, gives us hope for the future. Without it, we'll never fulfill God's plan for our life. Just, we don't see it. If we can't see it, we can't fulfill it. Like I said, we won't, we don't stumble into it. Circumstances will divert us, hardship will steal from us, and we end up quitting. A person's vision will sustain them when everything around them seems contrary. Romans 12.2 says this, says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. So as God gives us visions, they're, they're perfect in his eyes, the vision he gives us. And so we, uh, 
you know, we have a we have a picture in our mind of what God has in store for us. Um, if we don't ask Him, you know, just ask Him what you know. What is your what is the picture? I, I mean, I'm a little I'm a little bold that way. I'll say, uh, okay, what's the end game here? You know, and uh, he's pretty he's pretty quick to give me that. If I, uh, I mean, sometimes not so quick, but it's quick as far as he's concerned. <laughs> His timing is always perfect. So, anybody else? Dana. Um, well, well, I was thinking um, about, well, Steve McVeigh's teaching on quantum prayer, and I think uh, Mike Popovich and different ones. I'm just thinking along the lines of praying for others. And it's uh, like for you, Melissa, I would pray. Um, imagining you imagining you just healthy every organ of your body in good health every vein every bit of your anatomy flourishing and and working well and um i just imagine anything from the past falling away anything that wouldn't uh be for your your good and god's glory would just fall away from you and I thank God for Melissa and the, your beautiful yeah. self, your personality, yeah. your intelligence, all of how God has made you. And I look uh, and know that in my imagination, Melissa is provided for in every physical need and every spiritual need and everything for her to prosper. Thank you, God, for Melissa. And uh, the way you have performed in her life and carried her to this point. And so that to me is the way we pray. We don't beg God. We just know this is the way he has for her, for mm -hmm. her blessing in every way. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about this way to pray is that we're seeing in our imagination what, yeah. okay, what is, is. But now we know that we can call forth uh, blessing because that's who we are. We're, we're as Christ in this world. <laughs> Amen. Dina, Amen. you're amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. I love it. And this is, you know, this is what I was talking about earlier where we um, rub shoulders and encourage each other and love on each other. And that was a perfect example, Dana. Thank you. <clears throat> so that being said, I uh, I expect you to be at the at six mile tonight, Melissa. <laughs> so Philip, what do you got, brother? No, I, I just wanted to um ask uh, uh, Bob, um about two or three weeks ago, you were gonna send me um some a link for, I think it's Caleb Miller and um, someone else, but I, I never got it. I don't know if you had forgotten about it, Bob. I I haven't. I, I You asked me what my, what my opinion was. And I've thought about that. And uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with them. I, I don't uh, attribute to them. Okay. Sorry. I didn't hear what you said. You, you do not what? I, I've I've watched both of them on Facebook for about a decade. I uh, I don't follow them. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Now it's just that I, I was waiting for something from you, and I just never got it. So I kind of wondered. So I thank you very much for just just letting me know now. Okay. You're welcome. Didn't mean to let you down. Good. Oh no, not at all. It's just like you know when 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 there's silence, and I know that um. You know, it normally means acquiescence or like, you know, you're fine. <laughs> Mom always said, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's correct. Yeah. Good analogy. Jeff, what do you got? Uh, just a quick note on silence from people. Uh, Philip, uh, don't read into it. Pray into it. There you go. I, uh, uh, my story is... Uh, I've been waiting on someone to sign some important paperwork. 
it within my family and they, it just hasn't happened, but it turns out they have a very busy life. But they're, they're still on board, but they they just haven't gotten around to it yet. I had a friend once that uh, used to say he could give me a round to it, a little round to it, you know, and mm. uh, so, yeah, just don't read anything. Don't read into silence what's what's not stated. Uh, uh, speaking of round to it, I've been to, to I've been to Zig Ziglar things a couple times and one of the things he has, he has a little wooden thing yep. that says says to it on it. So that's part of your package when you go to a Zig Ziglar, Zig Ziglar conference. Uh, Melissa. Uh, I just wanted to uh, reinforce and agree with uh, what Jeff said. Um, I, I have a tendency when I don't hear from people for a long time to my mind thinks goes down the wrong path and thinks of negative reasons why I haven't heard from them. And so I just, I very intentionally tried a different tactic this time and just contacted a few people that I haven't talked to in a while, just let them know that I was thinking of them and missing them and, and, uh, pray, and that I love them and pray for them. And I got a really positive response and it just, help me know you know it's not it has nothing to do with me or not wanting to talk to me or they're just busy with other things and um they let me know that they are also even though we haven't talked they're thinking of me too so i think that was spot on what, what jeff said just on that line if any of you are waiting for me to say something to you and I don't right away. It's because not because I've uh, I'm ignoring you. It's because either I'm busy or I forgot. <laughs> I'm working on putting a sketch, a calendar together on my phone and stuff. So I know I know what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> never had I'll, to do that. Tell you in my personal experience uh, to the point that I just trust it. Uh, when I when somebody needs to hear from me, I'll get an unction. I, I, it'll just all of a sudden that person will come to my mind. Yeah. And uh, I've had a couple of instances in my life where I didn't pay attention to that and was very sorry later that I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have had a chance to say to somebody something to somebody or see them, and they're not around anymore. And. Mm -hmm. We've been taught not to trust our heart. We've been taught not to trust our intuition. Uh, the whole foundation of where we all came from was don't trust yourself. Trust me. Right. Yeah. We've got to get past that. Amen. And if we will get past it and, and, and trust it, we don't have to wait for a word from the clouds. We just matter of fact, Elijah kept looking for God, man, and here came a storm, and God wasn't in the storm, and here came this. God, it was a still small voice yeah. where God said, dude, everything's okay. And by the way, you're not by yourself. There's 7,000. That seven's a number of completion. There's a thousand times a complete number of guys that are right where you are. Everything's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. Um so the value of silence is it lets you hear. And we need to remember that <clears throat> there's always the great cloud of witnesses with us. Always. I I can't play guitar anymore. My hands got numb about 12 years ago, and I could probably still play, but the Lord the world doesn't need another old bad guitar player. There's plenty of them around. And and, yeah, and I played no well and I don't need to be playing now, okay? But I, I said to a young brother the other day, and I hadn't really ever thought about it, but it's really true. The fact that I don't play anymore has completely changed my relationship with music. Mm. Instead of trying to hear the lick or think how I'm going to play the chord if I cover that tune, or how did he do this, or how did he do that, and can I do it? I just listen to what they're saying. Yeah. And it's absolutely amazing both lyrically and musicianship that, that I, 
I go back and listen to my recordings and I hear stuff that, that guys did with me or even stuff that I did now that, that I didn't hear when I did it because I wasn't listening. I was playing. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, a, a, a good friend of mine said when I had to stop playing a, 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 a brother that profound brother in my life, he said, it's like your best friend died. Uh, and it certainly, my playing was a very, very close friend to me. Uh, Flo's my best friend, but, but, you know, I'm getting to appreciate, I'm getting to appreciate that friendship at a new level because instead of talking to it all the time, now I'm hearing what it has to say. Hey, Bob. Yeah, bro. What I'm hearing is <clears throat> with promotion, we we need room for what comes with the promotion. And sometimes the room we need is the thing is the space, the thing we used to be able to do occupies. Mm. And <clears throat> and that's OK, because it's the new promotion. It's the it's being it's being pushed in to a, to a higher, uh, we'll say higher place, a place that, that re- is going to require the space that former thing occupied. You've, you've got it mentally, you know, you know, you, you could, if you could, and it isn't the, if you could, that matters. It's the, it's that you could, you've, you've always got that. That can't be taken away from you. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a part of you. And uh, like a tree, you know, it's going to show in its rings every year and what that year meant to it, mm-hmm. you know, and you've got the ring of that or, or, you know, or, you know, that experience and accomplishment in your life. So <clears throat> just know that, mm-hmm. that that's, that's part of it. Part of the big plan. Big picture. The Lord, the Lord had me record a bunch of it. Hallelujah. And, 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 I literally now get to play music for people all over the world by sticking one of my recordings on a thread when it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. That would never happen with me sitting on a stool with an acoustic guitar. (laughs) I mean, it, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, he knew then. And, and by the way, my first recording I did because I was playing with a great band and I thought, good grief, these guys need to be recorded. I owe it to these guys to, to get them recorded with what they did with my music. It was way beyond me. And, and the second one, a, a brother that I trust greatly came to me and said, man, I need, I need to produce a project for you. We need to get you on tape. And, 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 uh, and so we did it. And, uh, so what you're saying, Jeff, is exactly right. That part of me is absolutely still with me, and it's absolutely part of my contribution, part of what I have to minister to people. Even though I don't do it anymore, now I do other things. Now, now, now I can listen instead of instead of saying, "Man, I got to write another tune or I got to go play a gig." I can say, "Wow, where would this tune fit?" If uh, I'm listening to what you're saying, brother, do I have something that fits that that's an answer to that musically? Because if I do music, powerful thing, man. I mean, mm. power of music, raindrops keep falling on your, anybody mm. in the room that doesn't know the next word's head. Mm-hmm. But when's the last time you heard that song? Uh, that's how powerful music is. And, and yeah. our whole life mm. is that way. The, the, <clears throat> Me talking about my music is 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 a small picture of what we've been talking about all day. Yeah, we we are doing and experiencing things right now in our life that have profound impact in a future we can't even see. And we're recording stuff in our spirit. We're recording stuff in our mind. Mm-hmm. We're recording stuff in our in our heart, in our soul. That that when it's time for that recording to be played, it's on tape and it's all you got to do is uh, it just comes out. Sounds like imagination to me. I'm telling you, we are the now Testament. We're saying stuff's being recorded right now that if the Lord tarries, actually, if the Lord just keeps on doing what he's doing, 
people may hear 50 years from now and somebody will say, wow, did you hear what this JL Gray said, guy said, or, 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 or Kitsy Gray or, or, or Melissa, by the way, Lord named you honey, just for the record. Don't forget that. <laughs> but, but, but did you hear what, did you hear what they said that day? Wow. That's profound. That changes how I see my life. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a, a great call. It, 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 you've really got something going on when people are planting trees that they know they're not ever going to sit under the shade of. And mm-hmm. every time we speak into somebody's life, we're planting a tree that we may or may not ever sit in the shade of. Mm-hmm. And by mm-hmm. the way, whether you know you're doing it or not, I'm telling you, in your day to day life, in situations that you don't even understand, because God doesn't have a plan for your life. You are God's plan. You are here for such a time as this and situations that come along that you don't even understand at the time and your response to them, your reaction to them, your, your, your how you speak to them or don't speak to them is probably having effect that you can't even possibly imagine. Amen. Stan, what do you got? Bob, as soon as you said, I can't play anymore. Immediately I heard, but I bet you're hearing differently now. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> and then you started going on and it was like, that's exactly what. <laughs> oh, 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 what one thing I'm hearing is there, there's some guys that played a lot better than I did, you know? <laughs> but no, I, I am hearing very differently. And, and yeah, I, I I'm not on the I'm not on the platform every morning at 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 1030 playing lead in the worship team. I think what I'm doing right now is far more effective than that was. Amen. Uh, yeah. And Amen. and at that time, that was the work, man. That was I mean, I literally yeah. I, I, I literally called my pedal board my workstation. And yeah. and and, and, they're and doing that. yeah, absolutely have. But but now it's guys, I has not seen ears, not heard yet. It's not entered into the, I'll put a word in imagination of man, what the Lord's prepared for those that love him. And that's not a funeral scripture. That's right now. Amen. Amen. Melissa. Um, I just want to say thank you once again, because you guys inspired me again. <laughs> uh, to- Amen to uh, think about my um, piano playing in a different way. Instead of being sad that I don't have the opportunity to play anymore, I can look back and think of times that I've played for people and blessed them. And that's a part of me. And like you said, that'll never be taken away from me. Um, And so, you know, if if I don't ever get the opportunity to play again, then that's okay. I know that God, um, I don't know what I want to say. He, he made it a part of me. And for a time in my life, it was, um, it was, I, I was able to share it and, um, maybe that time has passed and I'm ready to share something else now. Amen. Amen. Thanks for well, thanking us, Melissa. You, well, I, I like speaking for the group. I'd like to say we are pretty awesome, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, uh, it, it's from the sounds of the background. I probably need to uh, go rescue Grandma. <laughs> so, uh, um, let me see. I'm gonna pick on somebody, Lenny. What you Either got? Either Lenny's got his hand up, or he's giving us a high five. Which is it? I don't know. <laughs> you said both. I just want to say one thing in closing real quick is uh, I was looking for some material over the last few days. And I went on YouTube and looked up Grace to All with Paul Gray. And yeah. there are some resources and recordings there that are incredible. Yep. yep. Anybody who wants to look up something or should go there and go to the search box and type in stuff that you're looking for. There are some incredible resources that he left there. Yep. Podcasts, yep. teachings, yep. convertible conversations, conversations on the Bible, uh, and all different kind of subjects related. Amen. Yep. 
Amen. He's he's still here, Lenny. Yep, and he's still, he is still here. That's for sure. He is still here. Let me see. While well, you're thinking, by the I'm way, this this is a classic example of Paul Gray's imagination right here. <clears throat> Yeah, it is. It's a perfect example of Paul Gray's imagination. Yeah. Dana, would you close us in prayer, please? Oh, sure. Okay. Thank you, Father, that you're here with us, that you're guiding and leading in our lives for us to develop our imaginations and be free from any negativity in our lives and just standing in faith and power and just loving you and loving each other. So we just pray you bless our day and we thank you that you already have and that you're blessing us right now. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, locals, give me a send me a text if you are going to be there tonight so I can give them a number. They like to have a number. So shoot me, shoot me a text. So can you other than that, love y'all. We'll see you all next okay. week. I'll pick you up, Melissa. Okay. There you go. So have a good have a good week. Love y'all. Be blessed. I love you. Yeah. Be blessed. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.